meetings on January 23rd. So on the east side, Madison Avenue, um, January 23rd. So please, uh, it'll, we'll have that, of course, updated on the website and on the list. But if you come here, <laughs> we're not going to have a meeting. Um, I want to also mention the holiday party for the open source technical community taking place tomorrow night. Uh, this is a really pretty good event. All the uh, Unix groups, Linux user groups, open source community groups are getting together at Suspenders Bar and Restaurant on 111 Broadway tomorrow night at 6.30. And uh, you might want to come by and check that out. So let me get right to it because we're, uh, we're running only a bit late. Um, we're going to go for about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 or so, including questions and answers. Mark, did you want to come out? Yeah, I just want to make it that the, the next Python um, uh, work group meeting is this coming Tuesday. The next Tuesday, it's the Hudson Park Library at 63 Worth Street. And uh, we are going to be a little more structured in how we're doing things. So uh, if you're interested in knowing anything about Python and asking some questions, just send them on to me and I'll, I'll see if we can uh, uh, discuss them during the meeting. Okay. And I think Peter's coming back in January. So That's right. That's right. Yeah. So we're, okay. we're, we're, what we plan on doing is we're going to have a sort of like a bifurcated type meeting. People who are the high, the high power type of people who work on the project, and the people who are learning on the other side, so we can we just sort of like get some uh, two things going in one time. Interesting, interesting format. Good. So without further ado, let me uh, begin to introduce our speaker. We've been talking about virtualization uh, over the last couple of months. It seems to be something that's of a lot of interest to people. Of course, uh, virtualization began with the mainframe uh, over 40 years ago. And as the risk processors and uh, the, uh, the iron companies uh, developed their systems, that also included virtualization. IBM's LPARS, for example, was a derivative of mainframe uh, virtualization technology. It wasn't until 99 that a company called VMware created software only based virtualization for the x86 platform that we tend to use the most. Uh, and in the last short while, companies like Zen and now Kubernetes and the KVM kernel-based virtual machine, the open source hypervisor that seems to be very, very popular, is included in the Linux kernel, SWSoft, Virtuoso, uh, parallels a lot, of, a lot of companies now in this space trying to uh, virtualize and abstract your work from the physical equipment that you use. So without further ado, let me please introduce Alec Isotone from SWSoft. Thank you guys for coming. And um, uh, let me make a short introduction. So basically, I'm uh, working for SWSoft. Uh, I'm not exactly involved in OpenVZ project, which is, was, I guess, a starting point for this talk. Uh, OpenVG is an open source product and SWSoft sponsors it and uh, uh, Virtuos is basically built on the same uh, kernel or the same code base uh, uh, with Virtuos. Um, and uh, basically I will do the overview of all the virtualization technologies uh, then um, uh, we'll, we'll stop uh, for questions uh, and basically you can call them until uh, maybe some major chapter after I speak, right? Uh, then we can discuss it with him answer. I can answer the question. Um, so again, that's just a um, um, small agenda for, for today. Um, so first of all, uh, it's just general uh, virtualization technologies overview. I mean, everything that um, most of you are like not at the moment. And then uh, specific kind of focus will be on container-based uh, virtualization approach, which is OpenVZ, Virtuoso, Sans, Solaris, and others. And then um, you'll see the demo, you'll see uh, how Virtuoso compares to uh, the open source product. Um, and then we'll go with the questions and answers. Um, so uh, as um, as you all know, there are a lot of products, at least uh, recently in the next in the last like, couple of years, a lot of them were introduced. But basically, they all follow one of those three approaches at the moment. So it's either hardware virtualization, when, they, uh, when the product uh, basically emulates the hardware, uh, and then uh, basically the full operating system is being installed on that virtualized hardware. Uh, then there is the whole quarter virtualization, which is um, at some extent, similar approach, but in the beginning, uh, when Xen was doing uh, virtualization, 
uh, they took that approach. And what they did, uh, they had to and modify the guest operating system in order to run this fire virtualized hyperwise. So it was not uh, guest, uh, guest was not running on the uh, actual hardware, it was running on some uh, hypervisor compatible hardware, and this way you have to review, for example, Linux kernel, and for Windows, it didn't actually work. And then uh, the last, uh, as of now, is uh, virtualization of the operating system. Uh, which, uh, uh, which is virtualization within the kernel and then um, isolation of certain, uh, basically sharing the same kernel in uh, isolated uh, containers which can be used to run uh, applications. And this is uh, multi-server virtualization, uh, which is actually like, uh, it was supposed to be a funny reference to virtual iron, which uh, we're trying to do this uh, kind of cluster-based virtualization, but then they just decided to put it in management. Um, so this is more like clustering, uh, which uh, we don't refer to that as virtualization as of now when we discuss VMware or other solutions. Um, so uh, kind of common players uh, for uh, hypervisor or fire virtualization approach. And why uh, they are combined here is uh, for less virtualization, uh, it's pretty much the same. So there, are, there is like this uh, emulation and fire virtualization, and there is OS virtualization. So for, um, uh, yeah, you can see uh, the pointer there. So basically, uh, just briefly, right, again, you install the hypervisor. Typically, uh, for VMware, uh, it's actually a Linux kernel which is running right on the hardware. From there, uh, that hypervisor provides the abstraction and uh, virtualized hardware for every class virtual line. And the key here is, uh, uh, one, uh, you're flexible enough to run any operating system in, vir in virtual environment, in like virtual machines, because it's full hardware abstraction. And second is uh, that typically you have to pay a certain uh, penalty in terms of performance and overhead, right, with all this uh, stack of drivers, stack of uh, software, which is uh, sitting between the actual application running here and trying to write the and the actual physical disk uh, on the hardware. Um, so um, I guess it's uh, uh, one of the major uh, recent uh, approaches, I would say, or trends in uh, virtualization overall was um, introduction of Intel and AMD extensions for virtualization, uh, which made the life of hypervisors and especially fire virtualization solutions much easier. So what, uh, this allows them uh, to perform like, on the hardware, on the CPU level, uh, around uh, the instruction, the CPU instructions, within a certain guest. So they just, uh, uh, CPU basically helps them uh, to deliver the virtualization, and, and it becomes, also becomes faster in terms of uh, virtualizing the CPU. Uh, the next step for Intel and AMD, uh, it's extension of those uh, BT, uh, I mean BT, so-called BTT, uh, which would also provide uh, CPU support for uh, I.O. virtualization. So that would, um, uh, that would be the next step uh, for, uh, especially for, uh, uh, basically, Xen, especially for uh, Iridium uh, from Microsoft. Uh, yep. What was the name of this technology? Uh, I guess it's... Is it really Intel Pacifica or, or, or Intel B, uh, AMD Pacifica or Intel BT? I think you're talking about something beyond that. It's, it's just, uh, yeah, VT yeah, slash D. VT slash D? Yeah. That's in the latest, very latest Intel. No, not slash, I'm sorry, dash. Yeah. Thanks. The very latest Intel processor. So, um, I guess this is only coming here, and this, again, this will speed up hypervisors to let them pretty much natively access I.O., but at the moment it's not there. So at the moment, they only can use CPU uh, hardware virtualization. So uh, the players here, you can see, so VMware parallels, uh, uh, it's just hypervisors, hyper uh, which actually emulate these uh, CPUs or emulate hardware uh, without VT. They can take advantage of VT, but uh, VMware was like developed the solution long ago and actually paralleled it as well. So all the recent players, uh, Xen, AVM, uh, uh, they they can only pretty much work with VT. So they, they, they pretty much useless without, uh, without those extensions. 
Uh, Xen was one of the, I guess, the first uh, fire virtualization technology that was there, and now uh, uh, there's Xen source. Xen is an open source solution. Right? So then there is Xen source that utilizes this and uh, tries to uh, basically uh, market and sell it. Then there is uh, virtual iron. Uh, and uh, Citrix, right now, Citrix basically applying uh, Xen source. They, they will be building uh, something on, on the like, code base of Xen as well. Uh, KVM, KVM uh, kernel, uh, uh, kernel virtualization basically. This is the, one of the recent uh, and I would say uh, pretty successful technology that made its way to the uh, standard Linux kernel in 2.6.20. Uh, and uh, it uses a um, slightly different approach. So it's a very small, uh, very small portion of KVM runs in the kernel uh, space and uh, basically it creates uh, uh, let's say memory or uh, resources that will be used for uh, by virtual environments or virtual machines. But then uh, they pretty much utilize the support few EMU. Uh, this is another solution that is uh, again open source uh, like CPU and hardware virtualization solution. So they uh, KVM utilizes uh, few EMU uh, to basically run and uh, provision uh, virtual machines. Uh, so they work together, and uh, the kernel part, um, as I said, it's in mainstream Linux kernel, and that solution basically can download it pretty much in any Linux distribution uh, if you'll be soon enough if it's not there. So in Xen, uh, I'm actually using uh, uh, this uh, laptop running CentOS. Uh, uh, it's running OpenVZ plus Xen kernel. So Xen, uh, it's now in uh, Red Hat 5 uh, kernel. Enterprise Linux 5 kernel, and uh, those solutions, at least like even this example, they can coexist with a uh, container or OS-based virtual machine. You can run containers on top of a hypervisor? Uh, no, not actually. You can run uh, uh, containers in my like, so-called uh, domain zero, but not in particular domain. But you can okay. mix different types of uh, VMs and uh, virtual containers. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions on... Um, Fire virtualization emulation. So what is the virtual box? Virtual what box is, is a uh, is a parallel well it's it's a it's power virtual one. Very similar to the way it's being over. It's yeah, I, I actually didn't hear about it. I mean maybe a couple of players are not mentioned here, but uh, uh, these are the current I would say major uh, Linux based and uh, uh, beamware obviously the, the most known uh, uh, solution. Right. Let's just uh, let's just look a quick overview of OS uh, virtualization, uh, which at the moment uh, the most known problem name is uh, I hope OpenVZ and uh, Solaris, uh, and then OpenVZ is open source project, and again virtual it's a financial product based on the same uh, code base. Uh, but if you look back uh, in the days, right, uh, there were always been uh, FreeBSD jails, uh, which kind of follow the same approach. Uh, there, I mean, no. Long ago was, and it's actually is so called true, uh, which at some extent it's uh, the very basic of OS container based virtualization for isolation, right? So, uh, but then <coughs> uh, I, I want to mention uh, this server, Linux V server, virtual server, uh, that is uh, also a Linux based product. Uh, um, it was, uh, I, mean, I mean, at some point it was kind of competing, or I would say doing the same thing. OpenVZ, uh, but recently I don't, I don't see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of news basically about it. And then there is uh, Solaris Zones, uh, which uh, which is built using uh, the same, I would say, approach as OpenVZ and uh, Linux VZ. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, just you can see the uh, the comparison chart here, or I would say the structure chart. Uh, the difference with hypervisor is that, uh, that there is no uh, abstraction layer, first of all. It's, it's much more simple. So basically, it's abstraction within the kernel. And what is abstracted is certain uh, like kernel system calls. I mean, kill, for example, call to create a uh, process or allocate memory or whatever the kernel is doing, uh, that call becomes uh, aware of virtualization and knows uh, which virtual environment executes it. 
and you know this way you can maintain um, isolation between virtuals, probably resource control, and everything and everything. But uh, you still use the same kernel for all the virtual markets. So you, you cannot, for example, install uh, Solaris, Linux, and Windows in different virtual markets. They all be sharing the same kernel. In, in case of Linux, in case uh, open virtu open VZ or Virtuosa, it's a Linux kernel, it's 2.6 based. Um, it's like there are different versions, but uh, we kind of try to uh, open VZ builds the kernel based on mainstream. Yes, please. Uh, does OpenVZ support the concept of, uh, like, in Solaris Zones, you can have, like, a Linux flavored zone, you can have, like, a Solaris A flavored zone, or Solaris 10 flavored zone? Does uh, OpenVZ yeah, yeah, support Yeah, yeah, that support. Yeah, the kernel is the same, but in terms of user space, uh, it's all different. And uh, just uh, just kind of to show what's present on this laptop, uh, I'm running for like Fedora 4, uh, Ubuntu, and CentOS uh, in different uh, virtual models. Uh, but I will, I will go to the present, maybe to the demonstration later, so we will okay. discuss it more. Uh, yeah, so the same kernel, but from in terms of user space, in terms of Linux distribution, uh, you, you quest it. So you can run different uh, flavors. Okay, uh, but. A uh, small comparison chart. Um, uh, the major things, I think, I would say, uh, you with container-based virtualization, uh, you trade off the flexibility of running uh, multiple OSs or different OSs or whatever you want, uh, with the ability to run uh, to run the containers very, very efficiently. So you don't experience that overhead for virtualization. Uh, and in terms of management and deployment, it becomes much easier as well. Uh, so you don't need kind of to boot your virtual machine from C or uh, like give it like the full image of the OS. Uh, uh, something can be shared, something not, but still it's easier to uh, deploy, typically easier to manage, uh, better performance and higher density of virtual machine. So the footprint of those uh, containers are much lower than the footprint of the full, uh, full operating system running in uh, virtual machine. Because just, just think about uh, either you load the kernel once and you detect like all the hardware, you load all the like uh, hardware drivers and everything, or you load it for every uh, virtual machine. Database virtualization is also better for I/O down applications like databases. Sure. Yeah, Th and that's um, that's why basically uh, you can get pretty much native performance of your uh, physical machine within a particular company. So you don't uh, experience that work. So we'll. Uh, Let's just uh, go further, and these are pretty much the major points, and uh, this is the PowerPoint whole um, uh, running. This is basically PowerPoint presentation running in open uh, open office. So, uh, so, so uh, um, again, these are the major points, and let's just walk through all of them uh, in maybe some more details. So this is this is just just to set the mood, right? I want to show this uh, graph, and that is actually uh, we call it uh, static HTTP. So this is a test which was run on OpenVC, uh, and the test uh, the the idea of the test you, you create virtual environments, uh, certain number, let's say 50, let's say 100, and then you uh, start basically to keep those virtual environments, all of them, uh, with HTTP requests. And uh, the virtual environment is just running a bunch of typically, maybe open SSH, that doesn't matter. So it's a static page, <coughs> but which is being fetched from within uh, maybe 10 or even 100 virtual environments at the same time. So basically, uh, for that particular machine, uh, uh, which is which was pretty small server, uh, that was the response time that was received based on the amount of virtual so it, it's almost the flat line at some point when the hardware just cannot hold it, cannot hold that amount of process and amount of payload, and then it's uh, like skyrockets. But from zero to about 100, it's a very small difference in response time. It's, it's reasonable, basically. It's acceptable for user. They probably will not notice it, depending on the connection. And um, uh, 
Uh, another thing, uh, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Google, Xen, and OpenVZ. Uh, uh, you can find their reviews. So it's an independent review from HP Labs uh, that compare OpenVZ and Xen. And, and they pretty much found the same I, I'm, I'm talking about right now today, that uh, there is less, there is le much less virtualization of the uh, To trade all that is the trade all you're taking, and uh, that is the major difference, I would say, you know, between uh, container-based and hypervisor virtualization. Um, so that's, uh, and then let's do a small overview of uh, OpenVZ and uh, uh, actually, before we do that, let's, let's try to uh, understand. So, uh, who of you guys installed uh, or like used VMware at some point? I would say majority, right? So, who used Xen? So, it's maybe about 10 people, right? So, uh, something like OpenVZ or uh, Solaris or Container based. So, it's uh, six people. Okay. Um, so I, at this point, let me, uh, then I'll, I'll just walk through this OpenVZ uh, rather quickly because uh, you can download it. on the actual payload, so it's more for I.O. platform uh, uh, applications right now, network for actual disk. It's less for uh, like just CPU intensive or memory intensive. So it's, it's hard to say, I mean, but if for OpenVZ or container based with Tel, it's like, it's almost not noticeable, maybe one to percent, something like that. Uh, for hard virtualization can be 10 percent, I mean 10 percent, maybe 15 or 20. I, I don't, I cannot give you like exact number, but it is uh, significant to I'm sorry? Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost negligible, so compared to the performance of the physical hard. So let, let's say 1%, right, to be kind of over maybe. Uh, it's more maybe than overhead, but it's about 1%. Uh, again, I'll, I'll do the overview of uh, OpenVZ real quick. So it basically contains the kernel tools and templates. And templates is uh, uh, it's basically a file system for your virtual environment, for your virtual campaign. Uh, I guess, uh, let's say, let, let me just uh, explain maybe the difference between like the basic troop or jail and uh, open VC. So this is, and, and virtuoso at the same time. Uh, the thing is that uh, on top of this kind of way of trading OS virtualization, the, uh, there was um, isolation and resource control were introduced, right? So, and you can set uh, parameters, how much memory CPU or disk you want to uh, provide to that uh, virtual container. And it will actually look and feel as a uh, feasible server. So uh, from within at least, for, for, for the user perspective. Um, now we call, uh, so there are kind of, we call that patch or like that functionality that uh, provides the resource control uh, user encounters. Uh, that's just for historical reasons, I would say. And uh, uh, basically, pretty much all um, Linux system kernel resources, like kernel memory, shared memory, virtual memory, or <coughs> number of, uh, you know, sockets or number of processes that virtual environment is allowed to run, you can set those limits for your virtual environment. So, which provides uh, you're very flexible on uh, basically setting up the virtual environment, and uh, uh, you can make sure it will not take over like the whole machine, the whole physical server, or it will not affect other virtual environments running on the same platform, on the same physical machine. What's the we have, uh, I, I, I don't know the exact number, but it's, it's again, it's inhabitable. So overall, we have, it's maybe around 1%. So I guess network falls within those 1% uh, uh, boundaries. Uh, it's really efficient. I mean, we have a full bridge network, and you can actually plug uh, the uh, 
kind of connect the production environment to physical Ethernet interface or basically on the transport layer or even plug in on uh, a routed network or a routed traffic layer uh, uh, with also uh, cost routed network. Can a, a container be easily copied from one of the easily over to another server to another? Yeah, um, it's it's real easy. I mean, it's a manual process, not an easy, and you have to basically uh, I know, um, start the virtual archive it and then uh, move it uh, manually, for example, SCP to another server. And, but it, uh, it's, 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 it physically resides in files. In, in yeah, files. yeah, it's just a directory, and uh, uh, it's absolutely hardware. It's abstract from the hardware, so yeah, you only do that and it's, it's, it's a very complicated. Now it's very easy. In Virtuoso, it's a uh, point and click process. So, and for Linux, there is light migration, which I, I hope to show you today. And the, the, that light migration actually works without the shared storage, without the SAM. So we uh, we have so-called uh, snapshotting, and uh, that's actually that's why uh, checkpointing, so-called checkpointing, when you can. So you can burn a, a VE to a DVD and then and then move it to another Virtuoso machine with the same kernel. Yeah, way. Easily, uh, and uh, you don't actually need uh, this. Uh, I would say you need the same, the compatible virtuoso or open DZ version. So it might be a slightly different kernel, like 2.6 place, I would say. Right. Um, and this chip pointing, as you can see, and that, this is a, actually, uh, we'll speak about virtualization technology, but these, uh, like checkpointing, migration, uh, these are the advanced features which is not particularly related to virtualization. It's, it's all around it, just to be able to manage it. This sounds a lot like VMware. Um, it's I mean it's different because uh, I mean the for user right. No, no, user I understand you, you guys are, are are not doing full virtualization, but like what I'm wondering is is it like basically uh, in VMware it's like under a second it's almost transparent it sends out a gratuitous ARP and like your your network application will barely hiccup you know yeah. it's like. Is it, can this do that? Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, we uh, uh, we do the same, and uh, I guess I hope we do. I, I'll be showing this. Basically. And typically, what I show, you can either run some X based application, I mean, uh, Google application, or just like top or ping, continuous ping, and you will not notice the uh, virtual library. Yeah. Uh, same session. Same session, yeah. Uh, again, in OpenVZ, and this is all this like open source versus commercial product approach. Uh, there is no such feature. Uh, you can checkpoint the virtual environment, but you cannot. There is basically no utility that migrates the virtual in the business. Oh, okay. But you can do it manually in script uh, manually. The technology of course is a lot more stuff. Uh, so this is uh, something uh, uh, you know additional features uh, which is uh, unique to OpenVZ and Virtuosa. Uh, uh, but we will just show see them in the demo. You can actually I got uh, if uh, anyone is interested, I got uh, OpenVZ Live series, so you don't need to install it. Uh, you just uh, load it, uh, boot it from your laptop, uh, and uh, you can play until you run out of RAM. So, uh, so let me know if you, if you if you want, and that's way basically the easiest way to just try it. It's CentOS uh, 4.4 based way. Um, so uh, this is uh, it is important basically for us as just as a measure of some success of OpenVZ to be introduced in the mainstream journal. And right now, uh, certain parts of uh, certain parts of OpenVZ virtualization were introduced there already. And it's not actually uh, as double soft it's OpenVZ at this point because it's a joint effort of uh, different you know teams and. Uh, People that are doing that, uh, that now can continue to do open. We did, but it's uh, it's commercial, you know, virtuous, but it doesn't uh, affect OpenVC at all. And uh, basically, the major thing that was, uh, from my perspective, uh, introduced in uh, the mainstream journal is so called process, uh, process ID virtualization. So, and that is actually the uh, the major part of this uh, checkpointing or live migration. So the, the thing is that uh, from the host machine, uh, you got one set of IDs running, for, I'm sorry, process IDs for a particular set of uh, process. 
from the conversion lines, it's a different setting. It's kind of, there is a relation, but it's independent. So you can just uh, take the conversion line and snap out the process running with it, with the internal kind of process IDs. You can bring it to another server and uh, don't worry about uh, some process feed collision or something like that. So within the virtual space, the same on the host, uh, they, they receive like different uh, process IDs uh, given uh, like new, some, some new process IDs. Uh, and uh, IPC virtualization uh, uh, in the process communication was included there as well. So it's not full OpenVC uh, functionality or kernel patch, but uh, certain parts uh, uh, were introduced in 2.6 and 2.3. Basically, if you have uh, some questions, like, or uh, let me, let's call the questions uh, to I show with the demo, and uh, that's, uh, uh, so that, yeah. The question about templates, because I, I, I didn't realize that you know, different flavors of different templates. I thought I used to think all the containers had to be trying to keep the same flavor as the host operating system. Mm -hmm. How would, if you have an ISO file, say, in Ubuntu or in CentOS or in the core of Dora, and you're, let's say that your, your, your host operating system that, say, is CentOS running with Rosa, um, how do you install that 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 that, that, there is, that OS? Yeah, there is a special, uh, basically, uh, the easiest way. Uh, the easiest way is to search it here, because it's a little bit different uh, different approach. Uh, the thing is, let me show you. So from the virtual, uh, from the open music perspective. It's not that it's not just like so no, no, it's 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 more co complex than that. But uh, you need to do it once. You need uh, you basically need to kind of convert your ISO uh, to so-called uh, cache uh, for the template. And uh, I assume that the, the community has done a lot of user yeah, yeah. So for uh, for example, right now for OpenVZ, I only have some, uh, and the community itself. Uh, No, I think there are maybe 20 to so that is the list of templates available right now and it's actually twice as much. So people create them, they can give it back or uh, you can, you know, it's fairly, of course it's kind of complicated when you just started, but there are guides, uh, it's easy to do for pretty much any distribution. But if you download one of these templates and I guess you have to have the ISO file with the template? No, no. You just need this uh, this particular scope pre-cache uh, template. That's all you need. And let, let me just show. You. So if you download, for example, uh, I don't know, CentOS or Fedora or uh, in my case Ubuntu, here is uh, just a couple of commands uh, how you can create your virtual uh, your virtual environment. Uh, there is a tool uh, ZCTL, virtual controller, open ZC control. Uh, let's say. Uh, it's so called ID of the virtual environment. So that template contains the, all the installation files and the environment from the ISO. Uh, it contains uh, a pre installed environment? Or? Yeah, so the way you do it actually you kind of so called bootstrapping, or uh, you actually install RPMs or Debian packages to, let's say, slash TMP location. Uh, you can extract actual RPMs, and then you cache, you create on Tarbo from that uh, directory, and you extract it to create a new version one. So basically, uh, it's the simplest part, I guess, uh, in uh, <laughs> virtual version one or OpenVZ itself. So, so we created uh, a virtual. Uh, we can see it uh, in the list. It's stopped right now. It uh, doesn't have anything signed. It's just, uh, it's just in a. So what uh, the next step typically would be, let's say, add IP address. Um, I'm just uh, making it up. I don't have any block of IP addresses here. Uh, but uh, if you use, uh, you know, the proper IP address that is routable, your version line will be instantly available. So how is it done? Do you have it? Do you have to sign to like a bridge interface, or is this? 
Um, by default, it's supposed, like, as I said, host routed, and I can I can I can show you just in a second. Uh, so for those IP addresses available for the uh, the IP configuration of the uh, operation? Uh, no, no, no. So, so, it's, so it's a virtual interface? Okay. So let me start it. Uh, let me start and let me uh, show you the way it looks from the networking perspective if you want to see. So at this point, virtual environment is running. All right. Uh, what I can do execute the command there, and there is a command, uh, uh, let me expand it. So this is the if config or like just network configuration within the virtual environment, the main idea. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's, you know, when we speak about management and ease of deployment of management, that's one of the things, right? The file system for your uh, virtual environment companion, it's available on the host, right? Do you guys have the same concept of, of tools within, within, within the virtual environment, or do you guys... We don't need them. them. I mean, uh, the tools, they typically uh, use to support or like uh, provide some additional support for virtualized hardware, so we don't, we don't have So when you put a template in a VE, um, it's, I assume it's running completely headless, Right, so if you wanted to, to get through, you would work on a VNC server with it? Yeah, then? no machine or with this NX server or VNC yeah. or whatever. So, sure. And um, so, just uh, again, I don't want to stop on this too much, but here's as we, what is called cost routed network. So, the virtual environment here is the AP address, right? Uh, and this virtual environment actually uh, has some dummy gateway, or I would say this gateway is not present on the host system in any way. It points to uh, this virtual interface that is also present on the host. So the idea or the goal of host routed network is to deliver the packet from virtual environment to the host, and then the host machine. Um, so basically, an interface tunnel is rather than a bridge. It's it's a route. Yes, it's exactly host routed network. So in, and the host becomes the route. You can also do a bridge. Yeah, yeah, you can do a bridge. I mean, so there are. Uh, as you see, actually, uh, on the host machine, there is a bridge interface that you can map to. Uh, there is a host route interface, and uh, so this is my virtual right. So what I can do is, as well, just to uh, I can uh, issue so called enter command and basically enter into the context of the virtual environment and. From there, uh, you see, like, there is SSH running. Uh, I can uh, do whatever, right? I, I'm still looking at you. Let's say you're, you're running 2.6.20 mm -hmm. kernels on uh, the host system, and Ubuntu, let's just say it's, it's 2.6. You don't, you don't use the kernel. I mean, the kernel is loaded on the physical machine once. Okay. It is actually open busy kernel. And that's it. All the virtuals share it, and they use the, uh, that term of it. Oh, that doesn't matter. So, at some extent. Uh, so, how are you dealing with, with, with packages and stuff that are, that are dependent on kernels? Uh, so, there are, for example, for virtuals, the way it's done, we create so called dummy packages, as we call them, right? So, the package that provides, for example, kernel uh, 2.4 point whatever, 2.6. Something. Not actually providing it, but satisfying the RPM or uh, Debian dependencies. Because you don't need it. I mean, uh, you just need it for dependencies. Yep. If they were to change the system call interfaces, can you provide system call mapping for different system calls between kernel? Uh, it's not system call mapping. It's, uh, as, as I call it, all the system calls become virtualization aware. So if it happens, if a virtual environment executes that call, the kernel knows that, that it was issued from within that virtual environment. And it accounts, for example, memory usage uh, for that particular virtual environment. So, uh, what architectures can you guys run on that? Uh, I mean, it's Itanium uh, 60, uh, X64 and just 86. So it's. Uh, is that power? Hmm? 
Uh, OpenV actually does it for PPC, uh, but not virtual. Yeah. Is there a limit number of open sources that you can do Uh, you mean Linux distributions or? Like, yeah, like, yeah, uh, not just this one. Oh, like yeah. So OpenV, it's Linux only. Uh, Virtuoso supports uh, Windows and I mean, I mean, three architectures of Windows and three architectures of Linux. So you uh, can't have Windows code just with Linux. Or no, Linux. no. That, that's that's the limitation, and you you do not actually take this of any. So you you just run Linux on Linux, Windows on Windows, and Solaris on Solaris. Will you be running the OS X platform eventually? Uh, maybe, may I I. I don't know, but uh, the, we as a company, right, uh, as, as WSO, we also have parallels, which is basically a happy way. And it's, no, it's better to be compared to, I would say, at this point, uh, being where workstation, being where serve. So it's not ESX, it's not. Uh, uh, but uh, the plan is sort of like moving forward uh, is to support and provide you the ability to be either uh, virtualized or like OS based container or uh, like virtual machine. So uh, I just actually uh, jumped into the uh, virtual environment, right? And that's uh, how it looks from within. I mean, from the within, you can see that the process which are around there, that's only process that belong to the virtual. If I'm uh, like going out from there and I'm running the same process list on the host machine, you can see it's obviously a huge amount of process like uh, system or kernel wide demos. And then uh, that is kind of fine. That's the way a virtual environment looks from the uh, host perspective. So it's in it that belongs to a particular virtual environment and then a set of process. Uh, I mean, whether it's, uh, for example, this virtual running uh, actually MySQL, right? This one doesn't run, I mean, just uh, SSH. Uh, this one also Apache. Uh, and that's actually, uh, in terms of kind of troubleshooting all that stuff, you can easily run top on the host machine and actually pinpoint the exact process uh, and exact virtual environment where this is happening. Or you can use uh, all the tools of operating system to troubleshoot or understand what's going on. You said the process ID number is between two and Yeah, so process ID is, uh, sorry, process ID is that you see uh, within um, within V and for the same process on the host, they are different. And it is done for that uh, light computation. So let me, uh, but this is, uh, I believe that just uh, covers most of those scenarios there. Uh, also, obviously, there is this package control, like OS templates, and also application templates that they can use. Um, or actually, basically, we support YAMP. Uh, or ABTDF, and uh, there is a wrapper around it uh, that you can use to deliver packages from the host and from a central point. Yes? Uh, is anybody building, um, is it just OS uh, virtualization? Are they building appliances? You know, where it's the OS plus some kind of server running um, as an image, and then you just yeah. install it? I, I mean, at least I know one. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. based on virtuals, and actually, it's a Asterix PDX solution. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can just, uh, yeah, you can use it this way as well, uh, definitely. And I, some uh, some companies are doing it at this, at this moment with uh, virtuals or open music. Um, you can do uh, magic tools in virtuals? Uh, yes, and this is, will be uh, in a couple of slides, basically. And we can see the actual, so this is uh, open VZ, it's command line only. So you can create virtuals. Uh, I mean, again, it's very efficient. The technology is pretty much the same. Uh, resource control, efficiency, uh, it's all there. But management tools, uh, <coughs> there are none like, uh, at the moment. Although there are some projects, uh, open source projects, which are in some state right, that can be used to uh, manage open business. Uh, uh, not only. And for a lot of features on top of that. I mean, but basically, yes, that's like the common, uh, you know, model, right? So the core is the same, but on top of that, uh, you know, the products are pretty different. 
Uh, and yeah, another thing, uh, uh, let me just show this. So for, for Linux virtualization specifically, OpenVZ is a great tool there because you can actually combine it uh, with XAM. So this kernel, this particular kernel, that is an OpenVZ kernel, and again, that is the publicly available one. Uh, it's not the one you have on live but uh, it's still slightly new. So the OpenVZ kernel replace your folks on live Yeah. So if you look at uh, graph, so yeah, we just introduced a new kernel that is based on some SAMBOS kernel, but it has the uh, OpenVZ patch and XAM patch, basically. And this way you can run both uh, both types of uh, virtual machines. So basically you can run, uh, and this one, this machine doesn't have uh, So this is, this is an OpenVZ Zen kernel? Yeah. yeah. That actually was uh, recently well, announced, and that is, uh, that is well, that what makes it even more flexible. Right? So you can run, for example, Windows in Zen, if your driver supports it. You can run uh, just a lot of Linux machines very, very fast uh, using OpenVZ. I mean, I know we can run over my code. Actually, no. Uh, I already, uh, you can only run it in this way. Uh, uh, domain, uh, domain zero is exam code, right? So uh, it will not be kind of support within exam, I guess. Uh, yep. That's a question. I wanted to know if you chose that as a process, if the process was created inside the Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let's let's do this. Uh, <coughs> enter seventy five. So let's start. Uh, I know I cannot think of any uh, you know fire intensive process right now. So uh, I started talk within a virtual environment. Uh, maybe it wasn't fast enough. CPU burning application or something? Huh? Uh, I'm not sure this one. But here is. I created with some. I created with some defaults, yes. uh, and those defaults uh, uh, can obviously be changed. And this is the full set of parameters. So I, what I can say here is that my kind of. I know the virtual environment basically overutilizes the resources. I, mean, I don't want it to be that intense, right? Uh, it uses some defaults. It always uses some defaults. You can set it to unlimited, but by default, uh, when you don't specify anything, some limits are still there. So I can say the CPU limit is uh, 10%. And uh, where is it? Oh. On the host. So yes, now uses like 10, 8, 11, uh, something like this. So if I, I mean, unfortunately this console is the same. Uh, let me just start another one. But in 2875, it'll show up in the uh, Yeah, yeah, it should, yeah, it will. So, yes. so this is our talk. Right, and depends on how we configure the resource uh, and settings parameters for the virtual. It will obviously utilize less or more in terms of uh, physical resources. 
So, 75, 50%. And you see that there is a warning. You can actually, it jumps, it basically goes to 50 after some. The CPU limit is 50. That means you can use up to 50% CPU. Yeah, that, yeah. That PE. you're right. And also on top of that, and this is just a part of this overall resource control, uh, you can use the whole CPU share. Let me save it as well. Uh, CPU. Sorry, uh, it's CPU units. So there are kind of two major uh, parameters to control the CPU power. So if we uh, start two virtual environments uh, doing uh, the same, uh, where uh, we go, for example, <coughs> this is the one that is doing it, right? So we can do. Uh, Ember, for example, 16. Uh, or this, it is. So let's say you crash like a process in, in a VM, let's say like a JVM blows up or something, like, in a, in, like a JVM or something blows up in a VE, and you need to, you need to restart it with a VE. Um, what would be like the procedure for that? For restart, it's VCTO restart. It's, uh, yeah, it's. It's like it's Yeah, I mean, we, we actually would execute the grace to restart. You go run around level 6 in the virtual environment, then, like, stop everything down, and then it will be started, like, running around level 3. Uh, so here's. But there's no kernel boot process. It's, 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 no, it's, 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 no, it's, 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 it's user space only. Yeah, it's the reboot, it's, it's literally second. Uh, so, just another good example. So, I, I'm giving a share of uh, CPU right now to two virtual environments, 16 and 75, uh, equal share, right? Uh, CPU unit, I'm sorry. So, right now they're equal for CPU power, but one of them has uh, the limit set to 50. Uh, let me set the uh, limit to 100 as well, which basically I will eliminate the limit. And at this moment, uh, the virtual should like share the same amount of CPU. Yeah. It will be, yeah, I have two cores here. So uh, each process uses one and four. So we should, that's why we still uh, see a hundred. But still, so let's do, um, yeah, we will need to run another. So I'm just running uh, four. So uh, when you're running four on two CPUs, uh, yeah, it's now like each one is sharing about 50% of a particular CPU. So. Uh, it's it's the same one, nice level, nice level basically work within the virtual environment. So you can still use it within to uh, you know provide the difference or different CPU uh, parameters for a particular process. Uh, but this is basically kind of uh, an analog like nice and Linux, but it works like on a virtual environment. So let, let me do this. Uh, so CPU limit is gone now, so they're using up to whatever uh, up to hundred percent of uh, the resources, right? I can share, uh, I can set the CPU share to virtual environment number 16 to 2000. So I'm increasing, uh, so now we should have two processes which are using uh, slightly more than uh, others. And it's exactly like 60 to 40. So 260 to 40. So even if, we, if, I, if I make the difference uh, more drastic, I would say uh, uh, we should see it. So it's uh, it's written up in Let's see, let me make sure this one has the few parameters. I mean, really uh, small CPU share. That. Yeah. 
So I have, yeah, I do have two cores. Uh, no. Can you limit the core and the number four that You can in Virtuoso, let's see. And, uh, yeah, you can. So that talk should uh, change. Actually, it's kind of strange. Uh, it's. Uh, I mean, the limit limit works fine. I mean, that, that's uh, that's just maybe the choice of a far like program that needs CPU. Maybe that's the way it does it. Uh, but. Uh, no. It's. Uh, it's more, and this is also um, uh, basically virtual environments for uh, you actually manage the total CPU power of the box. You just basically say uh, you're having some percentage of CPU power or, or you know, uh, memory or something like this. Another thing, you can kind of sort of mention that. So all the changes for resource settings, they happen dynamically. So we don't need to, to change the memory limit, to change the disk space for virtual. We don't need to restart virtual or anything. So we just apply it and it's, uh, it's happening on the fly. Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, we, I mean, OpenVZ, I, they don't have plans. I mean, there is a GUI in uh, Garchiosa, which, I mean, which is, you know, full featured, I would say, uh, virtualization management center. Uh, but let's, uh, so let, uh, let me stop those guys so they can give some power to PowerPoint itself. I don't have <laughs> CPU limits in. Uh, X and Y in here. So this one should be that, yeah. And then, um, yeah, the summary here. Yeah, we just we just seen it, right? Uh, so it's best performance, but you, you trade off pretty much performance uh, with the flexibility of running to different multiple ways. Um, Virtuoso. So now a lot of questions about GUI, about the management tools. Uh, so the major difference differences with between Virtuoso and OpenVZ, uh, it's uh, management tools, uh, as referenced here by steroids, right? Um, uh, and then uh, there is also Virtuoso file system, which is another kind of. It's just provides another level of abstraction on the file system and uh, further for further elimination of the footprint of virtual line. So what it does, it actually shares uh, the files, the single instance or single uh, copy of the OS on the file system between different virtual environments. And it is done with the whole copy and write relationship. So if something is being changed in a virtual, that change is, uh, would be specific for the virtual environment that it will not affect anything. So you could do that simply in the Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the, the change will be present only within that uh, version. So let me uh, let me show, uh, so these are, again, the major link is uh, openvz.org. Uh, this is for openvz. Virtuoso.com uh, or swso.com, it's uh, um, something where you can find information about Virtuoso uh, itself. But what I want to, uh, um, address here, I mean, I, I, I just want to answer the question and just show you the difference, right, uh, between Virtuoso and OpenVZ at this point. How do you guys handle like high availability and, and developer uh, between Virtuoso and servers? Um, right now, uh, right now, what we do on both uh, on Linux side, we utilize a Red Hat cluster functionality, so we kind of uh, give that. We take or use that functionality of Red Hat Cluster to provide the load and physical costs, and but that requires shared storage. Essentially, uh, uh, with Virtuoso, that backup of virtual environment, and you can do the backup uh, within. Oh, sorry, oh, that was the Windows one. You can do the backup. It's all built into the solution. You can do the backup. You can save it to a DVD. You can uh, you know take it somewhere, or copy it, 
and it's uh, it's stored to uh, a different server. So, so you have like um, a cluster. Do, do you guys have like a cluster farm of uh, susceptibility mm -hmm. to like what you mean? What we, we use GFS. GFS, which is oh, okay. uh, global file has, system. Yeah. Red Hat GFS as a sh shared storage between right. multiple hosts, Oops. and then you, and then if the if, if the if the VE host um, goes down, the can, can the other host immediately restart the the VE? Yeah. 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 So and again, there is no hardware dependency. So all we need is the data. I mean the disk. Okay. So if the disk is on a shared storage, you can start the virtual memory. So, so you got one on a on a stand. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so uh, in general, so open VC, right? I can, if you have questions, we can just play with different uh, you know, icons here and there. So is this, or something? Uh, this is uh, it's XSL, X, XML, XSL based web interface. But, so, this is basically the so called virtually control center, uh, the management tool. And How many, so, do you install this on one host and then command multiple hosts? Or, or uh, it's uh, or, or to run on every host. It, it's parts of it running on every host. So we have so called uh, basically plugins or uh, structures like so called busy agent or virtual agent that is running on every host. And there is also called master host that uh, knows about everything else around there. Uh, Pretty good response. Yeah, I'm good. Pretty fast network here. So I believe. Uh, so I'm sorry. I'm I'm, I'm keep hitting the uh, Windows machines because uh, again you can manage both under the same management uh, from the same management tool. So and this is uh, we call it Virtuoso Control Center, uh, a web based management tool for Virtuoso and uh, creation of virtual. Uh, it, you can obviously use pretty much the same command line, but uh, it's kind of nicer. <laughs> Is it just an observer or it has some triggers back on the operating system? Something happens. Uh, like what? Some triggers back on the operating system. Or is it revealed in this channel? Uh, yes and no. So we, we, did, we have, as I said, this agent that is running on every physical host. It's running within a virtual environment. So when you install Virtuosa, uh, like the first in environment is going to be. Yeah, and it is running in you know, a special. Basically, it's uh, XML API that is being, uh, you know, questioned or by this web interface, which is also running one of the uh, service version functions. So uh, I don't maybe I don't want to stop on this a lot. Again, this is uh, the virtualization solution, which is uh, just been introduced. I mean, it's actually version four that has just been released, and uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, again, you provide the settings for virtual environments like its name, uh, host name. Uh, that is the sample. So the sample for configuration, as you said. So by default, you have to choose something. It would be either basic sample, or you can set like to be uh, virtual environment. Uh, smaller options here. I don't know like create the virtual after its creation. Um, Additional tools, I mean, offline management basically it's called, uh, I typically refer to it as remote KVM. Yep. Uh, if you have a master controller and that fails, is there any kind of failover to protect that? Oh, uh, yes, yes. So any virtual environment, any, like, as I said, on every host, every physical host that is being installed at Virtuoso, we run this service virtual environment. And any service virtual environment basically contains that open interface. Just one of them becomes a master and Oh, so yeah. anyone can become that? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. Uh, and, of course, you can also back them up and uh, kind of... Uh, so, I didn't provide something. Yeah, I need to choose the uh, OS template here. So, uh, let's use Ubuntu. Uh, the network, and again, you do it, uh, I 
as opposed to, I mean, even though even being aware of this, like, uh, their uh, virtual infrastructure, their, their like, top-notch, like, the most expensive product, but typically, um, typically you would install your operating system, you would go into the console operating system, and then you would configure your IP addresses. So, uh, again, in uh, OS virtualization, you typically do it up front, and that just simplifies the management and maintenance of virtual machines. Uh, so the, the routed network, there, there were some questions about a routed network. So you can actually uh, define so-called uh, virtual networks in virtual uh, and connect those virtual networks to different VLANs or physical networks. And you can be pretty flexible uh, uh, with the network. And that's, um, I briefly uh, basically spoke about the parameters that you can configure, right? And I just, I didn't show all of them because it's just not uh, not easy to show. Here's why, because uh, that is the amount of parameters you can control per version one. And uh, that is uh, everything from uh, CPU limits and CPU units that we play with, uh, a number of CPUs. I mean, you can define the burst of, I mean, uh, the basically something that the version one can use um, uh, at a short period of time. As, uh, if it's running under uh, kind of very small in time, but in, in terms of the law. Yes? Do you support like a, a template that would have these fields pre-filled out? Yes, say, yeah. like that was the template I've chosen, you know, uh, on, the first, uh, on the first step. It, it, it is a two gigabyte template. Right, right. And, and then, all those settings are, are same right, template. Right. And, and here is here is why. I mean, this is, originally it was 30 parameters and you would have to some of them have interdependency between you know, them. It was actually, it is very flexible, but it's very complicated. What happened uh, in, uh, at some point, uh, we introduced the whole SLM memory management, which basically defaults to uh, a single parameter, uh, like CPU, disk, and a single parameter for memory and uh, you know, everything else. So it's kind of combined parameter, which really takes care of assigning everything else itself. So based on how much memory you're given, yeah, balance, for example, CPU limit, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, amount of limit for number of process, limit for number of, I don't know, sockets, and everything else. And you can use them both, and I guess that makes the best uh, sense, because, for example, you can keep most of them, uh, like, without setting or unlimited, but then you can set uh, limit for the process, you know, which basically protects you from runaway or, like, some loop, like, Situation and like scripts, for example, starts to span itself uh, as fast as it can. So the next step is again integrated application templates, and that is something that uh, very useful if you think about it. So you can also uh, install applications. Uh, you can create those templates yourself. It's all uh, YAM or HTTP based, so you just define the packages that you want to be there, and this just appears in the management interface for uh, easier manner. So would you, would you like define a password channel to the network? Uh, or, or yeah, by default, for those public distributions or open source distributions like Ubuntu or Fedora, we just go outside and we take the packets which as required, right? Yeah, from the public mirrors. You can build the repository, for example, in one of the versions. It's, um, it makes sense, right? It makes sense to speed up the deployment of versions. But typically, you need to do it once. And, uh, I mean, you download the packages once, and then you will just share all that. Do you guys have any questions? I mean, I'm uh, we're spending a lot of time on virtuoso itself right now. Uh, if, you, if you want to question XM or KVM, whatever. It's the same idea. This server, it's uh, it's also Linux uh, container-based virtualization product. Uh, technically, I mean, they definitely implement different teams uh, and different approaches, but they're doing the same. And at some extent, they can fit in, right? And I think, uh, from what I know at the moment, basically, this server, they almost cheese the development, so they kind of 
but maybe I'm just, uh, I, I don't know much about them, right? I just know they're very similar, that's for sure. Uh, just the human nature. Sure, well, um, so uh, here is, so we have uh, two things that can help you, and let me pick a virtual. So there is <coughs> priority for IO that you can configure. Uh, it's basically a modern feature of Linux, uh, so this, this parameter. So the range is basically from 1 to 0, so basically you can set higher priority for IO operation for one virtual lower for another. It's one thing. So are you basically <coughs> altering values in the proc files that, that, that the when you pass the internal No, it's it's different. And we uh, we keep that. It's it works basically per container. And uh, it's more than just uh, you know, it's virtualizing that. Virtualizing basically IO scheduler, virtualizing CPU scheduler and every system instance out there. Is it the main zero is uh, it's schedule? Yeah, and the funny thing is, domain zero is also managed by the same scheduler, so it's referred to zero as well. But, yeah. So, I know I asked this about the virtualized the fact that you have to use the same and the same and the same and the same. Yes, I mean, I know basically, uh, I can, uh, I don't remember the company name, but they basically provide the solution. So, you can go to their site uh, and online, in online, you can apply a virtual environment running asterisk. You can just buy it and you can, you know, start configuring it. Is that switch box? Uh, I'm sorry? Switch box. Asterix. Asterix. Yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. So those, so those templates can make direct calls to the hardware. So like if you have a card that's like a PBX card or... You can. Those, those, those VMs don't call the hardware. That's, yes. Just go direct driver call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. For uh, virtuoso, let me... Uh, that's really cool. Uh, Uh, let me suggest SSH to, let's say, uh, one of them is you get data connection to USB and regular uh, host yeah, yeah. device. Yeah, yeah. So you can. Um, uh, this is the virtual server. I mean, it's the same approach, uh, right? Uh, some version lines are in there. What I want to show. Uh, I guess it's the easiest way. Um, so this is a command line control utility for virtuos, and you can a uh, couple of options you can use there. So you can just say that device with specific uh, major and minor is forwarded to a uh, particular virtual. So you can let the virtual environment uh, kind of use the physical device, and then. Uh, we can do kind of separate management systems for network interface. We can say that a physical network adapter is uh, basically running or explicitly given to a virtual environment. We can also do that for, yeah, that's, uh, and then there is another, uh, yeah, this is the one. What happens if you do a template, let's say you're running a, uh, but you can't run the same um, virtual so all of these powers. Let's say you've got one box which is a, a, a Xeon 64, mm -hmm. and you've got another box which is an Operon, okay? And they're both running um, OpenVC or virtual kernel, right? Yeah. And you move a template that you've already created, a VEM1, you can zip it up or it's hard on whatever, and you move the other one. What, what, what dependencies are, are required to do that environment? Or what is it, what, what, what's going to prevent uh, an environment from coming up? Okay. So from a uh, template file system perspective, there are no dependencies. So you just take, uh, because uh, you have virtual kernel here, you have virtual kernel so there. So you have a virtual kernel, does not matter what the, what the base the architecture of the system is? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. The only thing that uh, can fail, right, it's light migration. So light migration between uh, uh, AMD and Xeon might fail just because you know, a certain process might be using uh, I know, CPU uh, resources that are not available in the destination. But typically, because of that kernel abstraction, 
even that is not the case. Uh, I mean, light migration fail. I mean, uh, you they start the virtual during the migration. That's it. And they start is literally uh, some seconds. Uh, so I mean, maybe another another thing to answer this uh, kind of I/O question, right? It's uh, not only you can manage this priority, you can also manage uh, the. Uh, I think it's just not configured here. The uh, traffic priority or bandwidth priority. So the parameter called uh, rate, and you can just define uh, what is the maximum kind of uh, blend with the direction line with which one. Uh, and so basically, I maybe mentioned that maybe not. So the virtuoso itself, it started in 1999 as well. So it's uh, uh, just, we took a different approach, and we were very well known in uh, hosting environments, and in hosting application service providers. Because uh, that is the best density of version lines uh, you can achieve. Uh, yeah, so you just, uh, you efficiently just isolate client A, client B, client C within those containers, and they can, I don't know, run forms, blocks, uh, you know, deal with something, or do whatever they want. So you don't have to worry about partitioning the entire virtual disk. What you're saying is you have the same shared storage on that host, everybody's running OS containers, so there's no concerns over, over, over file constraints. Yeah, so here is uh, just, just, a, just a quick example. Uh, on the virtuoso, and that is different on uh, using virtuoso. So, uh, if you run like a BF-A, like a, in a, in a PE, you're going to what's the same with the host also? Yeah. No, no. You will see whatever is explicitly defined for the virtuoso. So, this one is has like one gigabyte of arcade and this is number one. So we can go to the management interface. Yeah, yeah, because you can see the usage the usage there is uh, only thirty two megabytes. But uh, this one will show the actual uh, so basically, uh, I'm comparing right now the size of the references uh, or pointers that I used uh, to create a virtual environment versus the amount of uh, disk space which are pointing to. And that's kind of the approach that virtual file system takes. We will see it in a second. Does the use a complete copy of the templates files for each for each DVD? Uh, no, no. That's, that's, yeah, the reference is basically a special type of reference or pointers I use to share that and uh, okay. don't use so as much this space. You've got 100 Ubuntu running, they're not necessarily using 100 copies of them, are they? all the same. Uh, it's kind of, I mean, it, it, that's what we call virtual file system. So it is, to some extent, carving or simulating, uh, the ID is something uh, along, along those lines. Uh, it's more, really more like as union address in DSD. Uh, for drivers, uh, this is, you know, that is where uh, where it might get complicated within virtual, right? So the drivers can only be loaded on the host because the hardware is on the host level. And typically, for OpenVZ, it should be very simple. I mean, you, you, got, you can get the headers, you can get the sources, uh, you can just build. Uh, it's still the Linux kernel. For OpenVZ, uh, for virtual itself, what we do, we uh, we typically work together with uh, uh, to satisfy that request. I mean, if we don't support something, right, we will just build that driver and uh, provide the support, and then after that, you can use it from the living virtual uh, But yeah, so uh, the just kind of reminding this. First of all, I changed the uh, disk size right ten times, so now it's ten gigabytes and again it's ten years. Yep. You know any. Instances where there are certain applications that cannot run in a VD that would run in normal bare uh, metal environments? I mean, something that tries to uh, like inject a kernel driver into the job site. I don't know if, uh, I mean, something like sending that down there or like where else or something like that. Uh, but otherwise, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use IP tables. Uh, it's still full uh, network in there as well. Um, uh, but yeah, 
but, but, but then it coming back, right? So the 600 megabytes is uh, um, available or files that have been calculated by DU. So that's available version one. But used disk space, it's only like 34 megabytes. So that's the footprint, right? 30, you say 34 megabytes for uh, 600, 1 gig, whatever. So in Windows, it's even more drastic. It was a fairly complex process for sure. I mean, for Linux, the sources are there. For Windows, uh, I assume that a template, you would have a license that Microsoft right in order to um, that template, No, it's not. Uh, what Microsoft actually, they kind of recognized virtuoso maybe uh, six months ago or something. They uh, they explicitly said that to run virtual version one, you have to have a Windows license. I mean, you have kind of have to pay for it. And from this perspective, uh, this is provided, it's just provided from this W, so this is, uh, I don't know if this uh, machine has, is anyone interested to see the uh, Windows version? Yeah. Uh, Windows host or guest? Uh, yes, hold on, give me well, in order to be a host, you have to be guest, you have to have a Windows host. The, the affinity is at the old, it's at the host level. So, it, well, for some of us to do consolidation, uh, it's still in the same Because otherwise, you'd be looking at Xander or VMware to get the consolidation. I'm sorry. I just need that to be fine. Uh, uh, in uh, Linux, yes, but it's, it's complex product because your environment is on parallel accounts. So you typically use some sort of remote access to uh, manage that. So if your application can be, if you can tell, like, use this card, this device, right? Uh, if you'll be able maybe to run this for the user perspective. So, so we don't have much time, I guess. Uh, uh, I I can answer your last question, and I will try to get this uh, uh, right. But I guess we'll not have any time to show it or to do anything. But it's the same approach. It's the same approach from uh, uh, from the host. You see uh, all the process from within the version one. You see only the particular ones. So are you just controlling our desktop? Um, from, you do that with the No, no, no. I, I'm doing it on the host. Uh, uh, I agree. Uh, so if you would have done that in the VE and tried to run our desktop against that, would that be useful? It would not, it would not, yeah, it wouldn't work from the version. Do you want templates of a different window within a window? No. So, for Windows, we limited, we basically share whatever it was called. Okay, so if you want, if you want, if you run Windows 2003 and you host all, all the templates, all the whole things within the desktop. So that would be an actual particular service. Um, well, you get your own unique separate environments and run separate dev in your way and whatever. Um, um, so one on one or one on one? So the command line tools are essentially work pretty much the same. I mean, it's almost exactly the same. Uh, I mean, really it's this interview that I was showing that manages uh, both uh, that and yeah. So if we if we keep, for example, the physical machines, right? You can see them. So, but this is uh, this is the virtual environment. This is the virtual the virtual environment. Uh, for example. Um, uh, no, 
So if you have an, uh, a Windows phone running over 400 bucks, so it's running over 400 bucks, we manage both Windows and the Right. And, uh, another kind of step for is double is to be able to manage uh, parallels uh, everywhere, like at some point in Zen, and anywhere, like, uh, be able to create uh, whatever, whatever you want. So, uh, last thing, right? Like, last thing I want to show is from within uh, the virtual environment, you see the virtual process, right? Uh, and this is uh, my virtual. And it's running on Adobe Archive. So from the host, this is like this top level RTP session. Uh, here, like this one on one with the uh, ID one on one, and I should see uh, a graphic right here. So it's the same uh, approach that is like very best performance out there. It's just, you know, the process from virtual runs natively on Windows or Linux. Uh, but again, you trade all the flexibility uh, with performance and density. So if I just shut down the process, right? It will be dead uh, from within the virtual environment. So, yeah. Right, so uh, if uh, anyone wants to stay and maybe ask some questions and uh, uh, stay open busy live CD, I have very nice handwritten ones, I have uh, even nicer light strikes ones. So again, if, uh, if anyone wants to stay or uh, and ask questions, please go ahead. That's great, thank you. I'll, I'll just move from the study song. So folks, we're gonna take the sound fish over to the hot pit down the block. Let's carry our conversations over there, please. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the end.